Welcome to All Things Covered with Patrick Peterson and Brian McFadden, part of the CBS Sports Podcast Network. Man, the name says it all. If you're rocking with us, make sure you leave a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts, and you now can leave us a five-star rating as well on Spotify. Or if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can get alert of all our great content right away. Now, let's get to our awesome show. Skull time. Y'all know what it is. Minnesota Viking fans, the team is starting to do some big things, spending some money, adding some pieces. A Vikings free agency update is what we're getting ready to tap into for all our Viking fans. Joining us here, Pat P. Bryant McFadden. The newest updated information coming from Minnesota, they've added Zadaria Smith, a three-year deal worth $42 million. Remember, uh, Smith agreed, quote-unquote, agreed to terms with the Baltimore Ravens. Renig decided, you know what? I can go get something else, a better opportunity, I believe. He, be- he believes, and guess what? He signed with the Minnesota Vikings. Also, with that happening, the team restructured the Neil Hunter's contract, which was huge because that opened up dollars for guys like Zadarius Smith and others. So after thinking about potentially trading the Neil, they restructured his deal, which was huge. And outside of that, one of Pat P's former secondary mate, Xavier Woods, who had a real good year. He joined the Panthers. Tyler Conklin joined the Jets. So Pat P, hearing all the moves, I know you've been paying attention closely to these moves, some of the guys you added, some of the guys you lost. Uh, what are your thoughts so far on the update, updated free agency moves from the Vikings? Yeah, I think the team is going in the right direction. You know, um, you know, they want to be aggressive, want to be able to get after the quarterback and also have guys that's able to range at the linebacker uh, at the linebacker position as well with Eric and um, Jordan uh, in, in the middle of that defense. Um, so um, I think the, the the upgrades for the team so far has been tremendous. And um, now we just have to wait and see, you know, where it end up taking them uh, at the end of the day. You know, so, you know, um, you know like I said, the offseason so far uh, for the Minnesota Vikings for sure has been, been looking very, very nice. Looking real good. And you think about Minnesota. I mean, you guys dealt with a lot of injuries a year ago, dealt with a lot, a lot of COVID related issues. Uh, but this is a playoff caliber team when you look at the structure, the pieces. Okay. Uh, adding a few pieces on the defensive side, I think, was more important than adding pieces to the offensive side. And that's what we're starting to see now. And they still have some moves also that will happen in the near future. We just got to wait right. and see what those moves, who those moves will uh, involve. So I can tell you this much. You know, following the Viking fan base, they're just waiting on number seven to get that call <laughs> and to get that agreement that he's coming back to town. Because for you only being there one year, I mean, you really impressed a lot of folks, not just with your football skill set, but what you did off the football field. So everyone is waiting for Minnesota to do what is right in bringing Pat P back to Minnesota. Seven <laughs> nope. needs to be out in Minnesota once again. <laughs> Paired up with Zadarius Smith, the Neil Hunter. I mean, those are the guys that can make that ball come out real fast. Ooh, how crazy would that be? Real, real fast. And when you look at, you know, what's going on in the secondary, uh, you still got Cam Dantzler we had on the show. Yeah. You know, you still got the hit man. You're going to have to address the opposite safety position. Uh, Mackenzie Alexander was already told he won't be coming back. Um, I do believe the Minnesota Vikings, you know, even if they bring Pat P back, they're probably going to take a chance at a, at a corner early on in the draft. And yeah. who it might be a guy who we had on the show in Derek Stingley Jr. Never I know. Mean, so this is what I would do if I was the GM for Minnesota. I bring Pat P back. I go get Stingley Jr. in the first round. I say our three corners are going to be Stingley, Pat P., Cam, you know you're running most nickel packages anyway because most offenses come out of multiple set wide receivers. Stanley yeah. going to be our inside guy. Mm. I got seven outside. I got 27 outside, and I'm kicking. With, I'm cooking with gas. And, Pat P, you know gas stoves are the best to cook on. No doubt about it. It's efficient. Uh, efficient. It's efficient. No question. <laughs> so, hey, Viking fans, if you like what I just came up with, hit us with a comment. Let us know what you like. And let's see it come to reality. So I just threw that out in the universe. Yeah, you let sign it Pat P. What'd you say, Pat P? Then let it manifest now, baby. Yes, sir. Throw it out in the universe. Let it manifest. You sign Pat P. Bring him back. Go get Derek Stingley Jr., the 12th pick. <sighs> Second day look real good. Real healthy. Real I good. Like that yeah, vision. We, what'd you say? I said I like that vision. 
and and, no, and you got two LSU guys in the secondary. Yes, sir. You, know, you think y'all DBU anyway? I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and so check this out, Pat P. I know you've been on dry land. You've been traveling and nothing like that. So I know you're aware of what has been happening in the NFL. Right. We just highlighted what has happened with Minnesota, just the organization. But when you talk about in totality, the entire NFL, the NFL stay winning. The NFL yeah. stay stealing ways to keep the headlines in their favor. As of late, Tom Brady surprised a lot of people. He came back to the NFL and Rodgers <laughs> acted like he wanted to leave just to parlay that into a huge mega deal to stay with the Green Bay Packers, stay in the division, <laughs> NFC North. But then Devontae Adams who we thought was going to stay in Green Bay when they brought Aaron Rodgers back, told Aaron Rodgers basically without saying it, I really don't rock with you like that. I'm leaving. Even <laughs> though the Packers offered him more money. Curly hair. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He, I thought they had that, 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 that relationship might not be as close as we thought it was. Not the on the field relationship, Pat P, but off the field. Devontae said, I'm gone. Other I'm news, curly hair Russell Wilson gets traded to Denver. Deshaun Watson told Cleveland I'm good <laughs> Cleveland said no you're not we got 230 million reasons why you ain't good he decided to say okay you're right <laughs> I ain't good I'm coming home even though Cleveland is home he acting like LeBron Cleveland I'm home he gave him 230 he got a Kevin Durant deal 230 all guaranteed I don't even know how that was possible the man got like a $40 million raise based on the contract he just signed two years ago. Right. Right. <clears throat> Carson Wentz is now a commander. That don't commander. That don't even sound right, but that's a new team out of Carson Washington. Is a commander. <laughs> he a commander. And Matt Ryan is a freaking coach. Cool. So all the headlines that I just read to you, Pat P, for the listeners and viewers that are aware of what has happened in the NFL, what was the most surprising headline for you? Uh, the most surprising, I probably say I was surprised, but I wasn't surprised. But the, the Devontae Adams move that surprised me. That the Devontae Adams move, I'm gonna say the reason why it didn't surprise me as much as I thought it would because last year he kind of put that out as well that he wanted to play with Derek Carr mm -hmm. when he was going, you know, when when the uh, you know, last year in the offseason when they was talking about money. He was working out with Derek. He was like, man, I would love to play with my, you know, my college quarterback again. And now that I'm thinking about it, you know, going through, <clears throat> you know, everything, like you said, in, in Green Bay, everything might not have been as good as we thought it thought it was with, you know, him and Aaron on or off the field, whatever the case may be. Yeah. But you're right. Devontae Adams said, I'm gone. <laughs> well, I said, we cool, but we really ain't cool and like then, that. Uh, with Casey talking about, you know, uh, you know, uh, if coming back home versus, you know, uh, you know, taking more money, although Green Bay offered him the same amount of dollars that, you know, uh, Las no, Vegas. No, Pat, Green Bay offered him more money. Oh, they offered him more. They offered him more. Yes. OK. Well, I thought I thought I thought I read something that they offered him uh, the same uh, the same numbers, but he turned they, it down. I was thinking they of offered the, him more uh, state. Uh, no income tax. Uh, yeah. No taxes. Yeah, that's what well, I was thinking about why he why he took um uh he picked Las Vegas over man listen um, Green Bay. I think Devontae was going to do this regardless if it, regardless if Aaron Rodgers signed or not because they said he bought a house out in Vegas some months ago. Mm, that's what I'm saying. So you remember last year? That's what he was working out in yeah. Vegas. Yeah, yeah. So I'm asking you this question, Pat P. Out of all the moves that I read off to you. What move do you believe could be the biggest move next year during the season? Tom Brady back in the NFL, Aaron Rodgers playing for Green Bay, Devontae with the Raiders, Russell with Denver, Deshaun with the Browns, Wentz with the Commanders, and Matt Ryan with the Colts. What do you believe? What do you believe could be the biggest move? Man, it's hard to go against that curly head Russ, man. I think I think Russ gonna be the biggest move. You think so? In my opinion, with the weapons that he got over there, you know, the defense is always pretty stout for the most part. You're gonna have you're gonna have Chubb. I don't know who they have. Um they got they, they also signed Randy Gregory. 
Yeah, and they just got Randall Gregory. So they always stout on the, they always solid on the defensive side of the ball. But now you got Houdini in the helmet. Yeah. Mm. A guy mm-hmm. who you know very well played with him, played against him a lot in the NFC West. Chandler. Yeah. No, I'm I'm talking about Russell. You played against Russell, oh, so yeah. you know you I'm know very, how prolific he is. Yeah, I'm very familiar with him, man. So <clears throat> I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Russ is gonna be uh, the best move, but I won't be surprised if Matt Ryan. That's my pick. That's, be be uh, that's my pick. Big, uh, the biggest um, you know upgrade in, in this uh, in the offseason. That's my, that was my that's my biggest move because I think if you look at the Colts team right now, they're already ready to win. Oh, yeah, Carson yeah. Wentz kind of held them back. Remember, <laughs> this is a team that went to the playoffs a year ago, over a year ago with Phillip Rivers, old man Phillip Rivers. Right. You got a running back, Which you got offensive the line, you Wait. got a defense. You know what I mean, and you got a watered down division. Right. That's important. You know how important it is when your division ain't that tough. Yeah. I mean, that means something. So I think that move right now might not be a big deal, but it could be a big deal based on how good the team is, how the good the team. Remember, they had the most pro bowlers over a year ago. Yeah. And most that's, of those guys are coming back. That's and, a solid. Uh, I think I think that's a that's a huge move. I think I think it's going to really they can have an opportunity, Pat P. They kind of be this year's Cincinnati Bengals, a team that really don't go into the season with a lot of high expectations, mm-hmm. but a team that can really Go in the playoffs and make a deep run. Remember, a year ago, nobody thought Cincinnati had a shot. Right. I think the coach could be this team. If you were a player right now, though, Pat P, let's say you're playing in the AFC West. Okay. How would you feel when you look at that division, all the additions? You got Khalil Mack with the Chargers, along with Bosa. You got Herbert. You got Mike Williams. You talked about Denver, what they have wide receiver-wise. You look at the Raiders with Devontae. You look at the Chiefs with Cheetah. Uh, 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 they added Juju Smith. I forgot JC Jackson is now with the Chargers. You got Chandler Jones with the Raiders. That those teams, you know, how in reality, you don't want to be keeping up with the Joneses, you don't want to <laughs> be doing what your neighbors are doing because you know that's not financially smart. You know, your neighbor <laughs> get to go get a new car. I really don't need to get a new car because I'm not in a position to do that. But NFL, the Jones is in your division, man. If you see that team go get a fast wide receiver, you better go get your fast corner. You got to. Yeah, so when you look at that yep. division, man, how would you feel if you were part of that division right now, knowing every week is going to be a 12-round fight? Man, win every game at home, first and foremost. Oh, I, no I, question. <laughs> got to win every game at home. <laughs> we must we must dominate home, our home, you know, our home field. And, you know, at the end of the day, scratch off half of, half, half of them, you know, on the road, you know, what, what 17 games now? So you'll be, yeah. what? 12 and 12 and what? What is that? Five? Maybe 12 you know, and five. How about the record uh, end off if you win all your games at home? Um, but, you know, it, that, that's a tough division, man. That's going to be the toughest division in football by far, you know, especially on paper. We have to yeah. wait and see how it all plays out. But in those games, in that division, every time you play against one another, it's going to be a playoff game. Yeah. And when it's a possibility that we're going to play one one of one of us going to play each other three times, so it's going to be a slugfest. It's going to be great football to watch. Um, I can't wait to see it all unfold because all eyes definitely going to be on the NFC West just to see because it's going to be it's going to be in my opinion out of the it's going to be one of those teams being picked to come out of the AFC West. Yeah, I mean uh, out of the AFC. So it's going to be interesting to see how it all unfold, but uh, that's going to be a heavyweight boxing match every single time, you know, those teams uh, score off with one another. I'm right there with you. Uh, it's going to be entertaining. Uh, it's going to be yeah. must-see TV. Real quick, Pat, what are your thoughts on, we just talked about Deshaun Watson. Number one, were you, how surprised were you to see Deshaun get a max deal, all guaranteed, 230? And what do you think happens to Baker Mayfield? Hmm. That's interesting. You say that. I thought Baker. I, honestly, I thought Coach was going to be a good fit for the ba- uh, for Baker, but they end up going with the with the older guy, Matt Ryan, uh, experienced guy, um, and Matt Ryan. But you know, I won't be surprised if we, if if we see Baker out in uh, Seattle. You know, I, I won't be surprised if we see him out in Seattle or it's another place. I I just had it on top of my head. 
Damn, I can't think of it right now. I can tell you this much, though. The thing with the Browns, Pat P, mm-hmm. no one is going to trade for Baker. They're going to have to release right. him. Yeah, I That's agree. the thing. No one's going to trade for Baker because the teams that definitely need a quarterback basically have fulfilled that vacancy. Seattle still need a quarterback, but if you're Seattle, why give anything to Cleveland when no one else yeah. wants Baker right now? Yeah. yeah. And I can tell you this much, Pat P, unfortunately, I think Baker might not be a starter this year. I mean, the way it's looking. I think he's going to be a backup. I think he he will have to wait for the injury to happen. Where could he start? You would say Seattle. Yeah. But I mean, at least I can see him starting right now. Like, if you're Seattle, you haven't, if you haven't thought about trading for, for him, you're not mm-hmm. really high on him. Because think about this. If you needed a quarterback, you go up and make it, make it happen. We saw what right. happened with the Colts. They needed a quarterback. They say, that's our guy. We're going to trade for him and make it happen. You know, yeah. we saw... See, uh, the Saints didn't trade for James, but when they yeah. were out of the Deshaun Watson running, that was their guy. Yeah, we saw the commanders trade for Carson Wentz. Like Seattle has been stagnant, and they already said, if I'm not mistaken, they're out of the running for Baker Mayfield. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, so think I- about that fall from grace. <clears throat> if this man was the first overall pick, well, just about four years ago, started the majority of his career, and now basically, best case scenario, backup. That's tough. Yeah, man. Reality check. If Houston didn't want him and they got Davis Mills, do you even know who Davis Mills is? I do not. (laughs) (laughs) Second year quarterback from Stanford. But you get my point, though. Yeah. If if Houston didn't say, yeah, we'll take Baker in the trade with Deshaun, they didn't even, they didn't didn't even. I'm trying to figure out, it's it's 31 teams. In the NFL, not including Cleveland Browns. I don't know what team would say, that's tough. Seattle got to be the only team. And if so far, yeah. it looks like. I was going to say Seattle, Houston, like you said. And now Houston, obviously, they would have traded. Well, yeah, they would have traded for him if they wanted him. Yes. But think about this, too. Jimmy yeah. Garoppolo right. still is a name that will probably be traded at some point in time. So you would think teams might go get Jimmy G before Baker Mayfield. Yeah. Dang. Jimmy G might not go nowhere this year. No, nah, he gone. I think they're going to trade him during the draft, Pat P. But I'm trying to figure... It's going to be a draft day trade. He gone. Now, he might go to Seattle. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to think where... Yeah, I can see that happening. Him going to Seattle. He might go to Seattle. Yeah, they're going to go with Trey. They definitely going with Trey. Yeah, he might, he might go to Seattle. You know, a draft day trade, but you don't usually see teams within the division trade with each other. You know what I mean? Man, that's what I'm saying about the, the Seattle. The Seattle one. I don't, I don't know about him going to Seattle. I'm trying to think who else would be able to. Houston was would be able to trade with with uh, with them. I think Houston cool with with Davis Mills, who you don't know. You need to go meet Davis. Man, I, Houston need to chill out. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, man, I don't know, Cap. Man, I I just told you it was gonna happen. You gonna be a backup, man. Yeah, he ain't gonna be those progressive commercials won't be shown a lot if he a backup. Man, that's tough. Well, we gotta wait and see, but we did a great job in covering all the highlights that happened over the last few weeks, and now we waiting for us to Minnesota Vikings and do what they're supposed to do. Come on, man, give Pat P that call, and when it happens, we will have an emergency podcast for you guys. It might be in the wee hours; it doesn't matter. We we got we got our alarm clock set. And you guys will be the first to hear it, only coming from all things covered. So keep your alarms on. Whatever you do to subscribe to our podcast, make sure you have your alert ready. Because when it happens, I it's going to on Pat Pete. Go yes, give sir. it to us. Until next time, see you when you see you, Pat Pete, Brian McFadden, all things covered. Peace.